So, we're back in Europa League action tomorrow night at the Emirates Stadium, five past eight kickoff, and it doesn't get any tougher than facing Atletico Madrid. We all know their players, we know that they've got Griezmann, Gamero, Doug, um, Diego Costa, um, Koke, Saul, Verselico, um, fucking the list goes on, Vitolo. They have got an exceptional squad. I didn't even mention Godin, Juan Fran, um, Oblak, fucking hell, where, how are we going to beat this team? And then on top of that, they've got one of the best managers in world football with Diego Simeone. A manager who I'd be over the moon if he joined us. He is a top draw manager. The one thing that pisses me off with our fans is for season after season, we can't defend. We're so easy to play against. One ball down the wing, one ball over the top. We see it again against West Ham at the weekend. The amount of times Arnautovic got in and behind. Just simple one ball. Again at Newcastle, one ball. It doesn't matter what team we're playing. doesn't matter what competition we're playing in. One straight ball down the side or over the top will get you clean through on goal against our goalkeeper or one-on-one -on -one with one of our centre-backs. That ain't good enough. Now, this is what winds me up. Diego Simeone is branded as boring, park the bus football, gives up all the possession, has 20% bollocks, absolute bollocks. All these people that say that clearly either don't watch Atletico Madrid or they don't understand that good defending isn't being negative, okay? Now, personally, if he came into Arsenal with the squad of players we have now, I am telling you now, this guy would make us better, instantly. We wouldn't be having all these bullshit goals because he'd implement a proper structure for when we haven't got the ball, okay? And this is where we've gone wrong over the years because we're great with the ball at times, but without the ball, we're schoolboys. It's seriously, it is embarrassing at times some of the fucking defending we come up with, especially from Mustafi over the last few months. He's been an absolute liability, but... I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, like, how are we going to beat this team? They haven't conceded a goal at home since January, um, which is three months now. In fact, it's over three months since they conceded a goal. That's in any competition at their ground. Um, so, to me, we have to get this game wrapped up as much as we possibly can. And I'm not saying we're going to blitz them like Liverpool did last night to Roma, because, let's be real, Atletico Madrid are a completely different ball game to Roma. This team have got top draw players all over the pitch. Um, so I can't see us going out there and, and taking them apart. That's just never going to happen. doesn't matter how good or bad you think Arsenal are, that just ain't going to happen. Um, so then you've got to think, well, how are we going to beat them? Um, personally, I do think we stand a chance against them. But like I said, I do think we, we need to play very well. They need to be slightly off their pace. Um, their pressing game is ridiculous. That's why they constantly get the ball back. They press you up high up the pitch as well. Um, and when they've got a top banger up front in um, Griezmann, even Gamero as well, that guy's underrated. A lot of people don't really talk about him because he's not a big name like um, Diego Costa or Griezmann. But he's a top player, very, very physical. Um, he's good in the air as well. And he's quite quick. So we're going to have to be on guard if he plays as well. Obviously, um, Diego Costa, we've been told, is injured. I don't believe that for one minute. Um, I know he went off with a hamstring injury the other week, so I watched the game. But I do think he is going to make a shock, surprise entry into the Emirates and he'll probably start. Um, Juan Fran as well, we've been hearing all week that he may be out injured as well. Top, top player. Top, top player. Um, been a great player for a long, long time now. One of the most consistent players in La Liga for a long, long time. So... If he is out, that's a bit of a boost for us. And I think that's maybe where we can get him. Um, we're going to have to press as a team. We're going to have to defend as a team. I don't want to see any of this bullshit from any of our players that as soon as we lose the ball, they're walking back. We've seen that with Ramsey. We've seen that with Ozil. We've seen that with Xhaka this season. Um, we've even seen it with Bellerin this season. And Mustafi, they just, as soon as they lose the ball, oh, they just give up. We can't afford to be doing that against Atletico. Every single person needs to be on it. And that includes people like me that are going to the game. I'm going to come home with no voice tomorrow because I'm going to be cheering and supporting my team, our team, um, all the way. I want us to win this competition. I've said it since we were put into this competition. Yeah, 
There it is. Um, we don't need to talk about Atletico anymore. Obviously, like I said, we, we know what they, they can do. We know what they're capable of. And with their manager, they've got a brilliant tactician. So um, I'm going to get into my 1-11 to for this game. I'm going to go with Petr Cech in goal. I don't believe for one minute he was injured the um, game at the weekend. Apparently, Arsenal tweeted out he had a hip injury. I don't believe that's the case. I just think that he put Ospina in goal for the league game. Obviously, Petr Cech's going to be going in goal for this one. Now, right back, um, I'm going with Bellerin. Personally, I've seen a lot of people that slated him at the weekend, said he was dog shit and this and that. I thought he actually played quite well at the weekend. Still needs to improve on his crossing. Um, there was a few instances, especially after Aubameyang came on, um, where he got down the wing. He's got acres of space, but he takes that touch. And Lacazette had made the forward run to the front stick. By the time Bellerin put the cross in after taking the touch, obviously the defender or the keeper are set and ready to get it. You need to whip that ball in quick. You know, if you do that, you score goals. Now, I'm going with left-back Monreal. Um, best player of our season, most consistent player of our season. And one of our biggest goal threats of this season, surprisingly. So, Mr. Consistency. Um, I'm going with him at left-back. And again, he needs to, he needs to be on it to, um, tomorrow night. To be honest with you, his deliveries into the box are normally quite good. So, I'm not too worried about Monreal. This is where I am fucking worried, though. Um... Koscielny, um, Achilles problems, he's had them for a while now. Um, we need him to have an unbelievable big push in this game. I don't care if he don't play against Man United, you know, but as long as he can boss it in this game, I keep hearing he's the boss. Well, let's see if he is the boss. Um, he needs one more big push. Try and keep a clean sheet if we can. I know it's a near impossible task, but... We all know when he does play well, he's a very good centre-back. Now, somebody who's not a very good centre-back, but I am putting in the team, is Mustafi. Oh, Jesus Christ. I can't believe I've got to pick this guy. But I think this game's too big a game for Callum Chambers. Um, again, Callum Chambers, nothing against the kid. But when you're playing one week at centre-back and then not in the team, then the next week you're at right-back, that ain't for me. That guy's got to come in and... and hit the ground running. I don't think Callum Chambers is up to the task. I also don't think Rob Holding is, to be honest with you. So I am hoping and I am praying that this fucking idiot is going to have a performance of his life tomorrow night. On to midfield. This is where I'm going to mix things up a little bit. Um, obviously, Mkhitaryan is not going to be fit for this game. He's going to possibly be fit for the return game um, next Thursday. Also, we know that El Nenny went off at the weekend with a nasty twisted ankle. Um, I've seen pictures of that, it looked disgusting. So, wish him well. Um, so, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to put, yep, yeah, wait for it, Ainsley Maitland Niles in the starting 11. And before people are screaming at their phone or their computer or whatever it is you're watching this on, that kid when he came on at the weekend was absolutely fantastic. I think. Arguably, one of, well, he, behind Darren Ramsey, I thought he was our best player, um, along with maybe Welbeck. But this kid, he's got no fear. Um, he's got high energy. He's very, very quick. And since he shaved his hair, he looks like a proper footballer now. So I'm going to give him a, a start. I'm going to put him in the biggest game of his life. And let's hope that he goes in and, and excels. Um, Wenger probably won't, but that's what I'm doing. Now, next to him... Um, by the way, I'm going to play him just in front of the back four as well. Just sort of like, not like a sweeper because obviously they, I don't know. You, all I want him to do is just sit in front of that back four and just mop up. Get the ball, give it to Xhaka, who's going to be in my starting eleven. Get, get the ball, give it to him, give it to someone better and just sit there. Don't cross halfway, don't do no stupid runs up the pitch. Just sit, protect that back four and give the ball to somebody technically better. Now, like I said, I'm going to put Granite Xhaka in the starting eleven. Um, I had a lot of stick at the weekend for giving him a 6 out of 10 on my player ratings. <laughs> Listen, you can have 92% pass accuracy, but when it's three yards sideways 95% of the time, that ain't really affecting anything, especially when I've been told that this guy's got such a great passing range. So let's see if he can use his passing range. He has been better as well in the last two months, a lot, lot better. Um, he's not as rash anymore. I've noticed he don't dive into tackles so much anymore. Now, if this guy does perform well, will be getting in their back line 
with balls over the top, balls down the side, and he could be the focal point towards that. Now, next to him, I'm going with Aaron Ramsey. Again, another one who's um, played very, very well recently. He's scoring goals, he's creating goals, and he looks like he's on it at the minute. So, for me, long name, may that continue, and especially tomorrow night, because we all know what Aaron Ramsey can do, especially when his confidence is high. This goal is a, uh, guy is a serious goal threat. So let's hope he has a great game tomorrow night. Now, in front of them, I am going with Mesut Ozil. Um, Mr. Missing, where's he been? Where's he been? He's had a long illness, seriously. This guy has had a seriously long illness. By the time he plays this game, because we all know he's going to walk straight back in the team, um, rightly or wrongly, decide yourself. Personally, I think it's a bit of a discredit to the players who played the last couple of games. Um, but with that being said, we were shit against Newcastle and we were bang average against West Ham until Aubameyang come on. So, you know, weigh up the options. Yes, he is quality on his day. Um, I don't know, but I'm starting him. Um, Let's hope he turns up because we all know one day he's brilliant and the next day he's not so brilliant. But let's hope that this is the night where Mesut Ozil comes to the party, pulls out a performance of his life and starts pinging balls through to my two strikers. Um, well, when I say two strikers, one of them's not going to be so much a striker. He's just going to be sort of floating around in front of the striker, similar to Ozil. But I want Ozil sitting a little bit deeper. Um, not too far up the pitch. And then I want Danny Welbeck with all of his pace and power, bombing up and down, across, making runs across Lacazette. Um, so that's my two up front. So basically you could call it, what, a 4-1-2-1-2 formation. Um, but when we haven't got the ball, that'll go to a 4-5-1. Um, but yeah, that's my starting eleven. Lacazette, by the way, that guy has scored six goals in his last six games since Aubameyang gave him that penalty. Um, let's hope that this guy can fire us through to the next round into the final, and let's hope Danny Welbeck can, um, can step up as well, because he's been pretty decent recently, and he has been scoring goals in this competition. I'm really excited for the game, I must admit. Um, I'm not nervous, I probably will be by the time I get to the ground. Um, and I've called for this game to happen for a long, long time now. I wanted this, I wanted them in the knockout stage, because I'll be honest with you, if we do fuck up tomorrow night, we have got another chance to recover albeit it will be a monumental task away to Atletico when you're losing. But in a final, if you lose, you've lost. End of story. Now, with that being said, I am going with a score prediction. Don't fall off your fucking chair when you hear this. Of Arsenal 3, Atletico Madrid 1. I'm going with Lacazette with the first goal. Let me know what you guys think. Let, let me know if you think I'm deluded. Let you know if you think I'm high on drugs. But I genuinely, genuinely think we are going to beat them. The crowd are going to be up for it. They'll do the light show before the game as well. Every single Arsenal fan that's going to the game needs to be loud and proud. Come on, Arsenal. Anyway, don't forget to follow my Twitter and my Instagram, LeeGunner82. I'm out of here. Laters, peeps.